Namaste, Sablogonko. My name is Kirill Fursov. I am a senior researcher at the Institute of Asian and African Studies, Lomonosov Moscow State University, Russia. My spheres of interest comprise the history of South Asia, the history of the British Empire, colonialism, and geopolitics. Recently, I published a book, Netaji, The Life and Disappearance of Subhas Chandra Bose. The book is in Russian, but with an extensive English summary. The primary reason for my writing this book was deep admiration for the man who was an exceptionally remarkable politician and a fearless fighter. Besides, Netaji was a figure not only of South Asian, but also of world history. And he was the only president of the Indian National Congress elected against Gandhi's will. Major problems of Indian and world history can be approached in the light of Netaji's activity. And I hardly know any other historical leader who proved so successful and ill-fated at the same time. In Russia, so far, there existed two special books on Bos. My contribution, as I saw it, was to make his biography detailed enough to explain his motives and achievements and to consider the versions of his disappearance. In the history of colonial empires, it is almost impossible to distinguish one figure which towered above others as the founder or the grave digger of an empire. Yet, in the case of the British Empire, I argue that ultimately its grave digger was precisely Subhas Chandra Bose. In the final analysis, it was he who gave the crucial impetus to the collapse of the whole imperial building. When India went, the rest followed either automatically or nearly so. Netaji and his Indian National Army were not able to achieve India's freedom by direct action. Yet, mere demonstrative effect proved enough. The Indian Navy uh, revolt and the general unrest uh, in 1946 uh, indicated clearly that there was something rotten in the British Empire. In fact, what I call Boss's network state in Southeast Asia it created a nearly pre-revolutionary situation in India. No wonder that the former British Prime Minister Attlee admitted in 1956 that the main reason for his country to withdraw from India had been Bos, while the Mahatma's role had proved minimal. In the history of South Asia and the British Empire, Netaji was an epoch-making and a symbolic figure. His activity as an anti-colonial politician um, can be systemized along two main lines. I call them the destructive and the constructive ones. Bose's destructive actions were aimed at the dismantling of the Raj. First, his resignation from the Indian Civil Service in 1921, just having passed the examinations, was unique. Now, no Indian before him rejected such a coveted job. Secondly, his insistence with, uh, together with Jawaharlal Nehru's in 1928 uh, to demand Sampurna Swaraj, complete independence, was revolutionary. Uh, never before had Indian nationalists demanded from the British simply to go whence they had come from. Thirdly, Abbas is seeking help from Britain's geopolitical enemies in 1941 was the first application made by an Indian figure of such stature. Uh, yet, um, Boss was by no means a nihilist. Uh, parallel to the destructive line, he pursued a constructive one, uh, in accordance with his notion of sadhana, service. Uh, these actions were aimed at promoting uh, the nascent Indian state born in the interior of the Raj. In this, Boss was guided by his spiritual guru Swami Vivekananda's formula, Atmano Mokshartham Jagat Hitayacha, for, for your own salvation and for the service of humanity. First, Boss's proposition in 1920 to set up permanent quarters and staff of researchers for the Congress helped make the party more efficient. Secondly, working as the chief executive officer of the Kolkata Corporation in 1924 and the mayor in 1930 and 31, Boss served directly his country and not the imperial structure. Thirdly, being the Congress president in 1938 and early 1939, Boss headed the alternative organization to the Raj. Perhaps his most important action, uh, 
during his incumbency was the creation of the Planning Commission. Uh, to a large extent, Netaji's concept of Samyavad, the uh, version of Indian socialism, uh, lay at the origin of Nehru's economic course. The destructive and constructive lines uh, converged in Bose's activity during the Second World War and the British radio propaganda and the forming of the Indian Legion in Germany, together with the reorganization of the Indian National Army in Southeast Asia, were intended to shake the foundations of the British Empire. At the same time, the creation of the Center of Free India in Berlin and the Azad Hind government in Singapore was seen, was seen as the main step towards the establishment of an independent Indian state. By the way, Bose's call, uh, calls to sacrifice everything on the altar of Mother India uh, place him in close quarters with the Russian Tsar Peter the Great. He was the first Russian ruler who urged his subjects to serve not only the Tsar, but also the fatherland. In fact, he aimed at building what Benedict Anderson later would call an imagined community. And the key problem in the historiography on Bos is that of Eastern collaborationism. That is the cooperation of a part of Asiatic elites with the Axis powers. The problem is especially sensitive uh, since it is not only of political but also of moral um, uh, nature. In the first decades after the war, it was fashionable to unreservedly brand such people as traitors. It is the winners who write history. Fortunately, by the late 20th century, the problem began being seen in a nuanced way. Uh, due to the change of intellectual climate, partly owing to the books by Edward Said. One may refrain from justifying Bosse's wartime choice, but first one is bound to understand fully what moved him. In fact, the anti-colonial leader's incrimination of collaborationism is fraught with Eurocentrism. It is the temptation to estimate the attitude of Asian and African peoples to the Reich and its allies solely through the attitude of European and North American peoples who fought them. Eastern collaborationism was a predictable reaction of colonial societies to the hardships of imperialism. And the hardships were enormous. The world outlook of anti-colonial leaders, uh, anti-colonial fighters, was formed by decades of oppression and they never saw anything worse. For Netaji, the model of atrocities was the Amritsar massacre of 1919. This and other crimes of British uh, imperialism were for him what Auschwitz has become for the Europeans and the rape of Nanjing for the Chinese. One should not forget that it was the experience of the British Empire that inspired German Nazis for their plans to colonize Eastern Europe. During the war, the attitude of the British in, in India to India was highlighted by the Bengali famine of 1943, killing between 3 and 8 million people. The authorities aggravated the food crisis by the preparations for the scorched earth policy. When in 1945, Indian newspapers published photographs of freed concentration camps in Europe, a British lady in Kolkata commented, the German atrocities apparently do not compare with the Bengal famine, so the pictures did not shock the folk out here. This is the background against which one ought to evaluate the problem of Eastern collaborationism. Of course, some collaborators were just opportunists moved by fear or career, like Wang Jinwei in China. But many, including Boss, uh, just held the principle the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yet Bos limited this friendship to the joint struggle against the Raj. Moreover, had the Japanese tried to become uh, India's new masters, uh, he would have been ready to fight them. In the West, Bos's collaborationism has been stressed, while, uh, for instance, that of the Burmese leader Aung San has been, on the contrary, downplayed. Why? Because by the end of the war, Aung San changed sides and supported the winners. Bosse's consistency earned him the stigma of collaborationist. Yet the stigma is not so much a reason as a pretext. The British cannot forgive uh, the grave digger of their empire. Uh, it is only in public that they spoke of Bosse contemptuously as a Japanese puppet.
In reality, they did apprehend his organizational skills and his ability to burn people's hearts with words. I use the Russian poet Pushkin's expression. As to the Indian government, technically it included both in the pantheon of national heroes. But for many, he was an embarrassing figure. Padaji was indeed an outstanding leader, yet compared with Netaji, he lost something. Unlike Bos, Nero did not unceasingly go against the flow, but often negotiated. Thus, Bos's figure was a tacit reproach uh, to all Congress leadership. Neither of these politicians risked so much and was locked uh, with the imperial power in a life and death combat. Apart from Lala Lajpatrai, a boss was the only major leader who was thought to have perished in the struggle. The sufferings of others were limited to jail sentences. In fact, Netaji's image somewhat undermined the legitimacy of the Indian elite, which replaced the imperial masters. Certain continuity of British and post-British India guaranteed bosses sinking into semi-oblivion. His hushing up in his own country, paradoxically, can be seen as one more acknowledgement of his achievements. Fortunately, by the late 20th century, the situation began to change. When the power monopoly of one party faded, Bosse's long-neglected figure came out of the shadow. His return to his rightful place was facilitated by the fact that earlier worked against him. I mean his being a Bengali, a representative of one of Indian peoples that politically were pushed to the margin, uh, though front rank from the cultural and economic points of view. The regionalization of Indian politics was conducive to the process. The cool attitude of Nero and his daughter towards Bos is explained not only by the fact that his methods did not fit into the Gandhian myth of winning independence through nonviolence, or that he was close on the heels of India's future first prime minister. One more factor was the traditionally cool attitude of the national political center to Bengal. The British looked at that province suspiciously, uh, since Bengali Bhadralok, gentlefolk, uh, demanded to put an end to imperial double standards. The Congress high command uh, resented uh, Bengal's former leading role to the national, in the national movement. The Bengali anti-colonial movement evolved from peaceful to into violent forms. In this, it has an interesting parallel with the phenomenon of the Sikh religious movement uh, at the opposite end of the Gangetic Plain. Uh, the topic of Sikhism is close to me also since one of my earlier books uh, is called uh, The Lions of the Five Rivers Land, uh, the Sikhs, Asia's Great Warriors. As we know, at first, uh, the life of the Sikhs was determined by the idea of nonviolence preached by their first guru, Nanak Dev. But meeting with fierce reaction of the Mughal Empire, uh, the Sikhs by the 18th century had no choice but to pay evil with evil. The Indians are mild people, but one should not try their patience. Uh, the result can be, for instance, the Sikhs, a community of valiant warriors. I think in Sikh history, the 10th Guru Gobind Singh uh, can be seen as a certain counterpart of Bos in Bengali history. It is no coincidence that there were many Sikhs among Netaji's fellows in arms. Bos's story serves as a bright example of the prominent philosophical problem, the role of personality in history. This role heightens precisely in such turbulent periods in which Netaji lived. Uh, his problem is that of a correlation between a system and the subject. While in quiet periods, a system, I mean objective processes, is usually stronger than a subject. In periods of sharp changes, be it crisis, revolutions or world wars, uh, the distinction between regular and accidental fades. Uh, in such situations, a person or an organized group obtains the weight almost equal to that uh, of a system. Boss tried to settle up history or even turn it, make it a, an object. To a large extent, he succeeded. To liberate his motherland, Netaji gave 110%. No wonder that when the Prime Minister of Thailand, Pibun Songkram, 
was uh, asked by journalists what a Superman was, he answers simply, go and look at Subhas Chandra Bose. Netaji's uniqueness in Indian history is not limited to his rise and fall as a politician. His disappearance is no less intriguing than his life. It was only in the 21st century that the Indian state motto Satya Meva Jayate, Truth Alone Triumphs, uh, forced its way in this matter. I mean Justice Mukherjee Commission report, rejected, however, by the government. The story of the investigations into Bose's alleged death is breathtaking in itself. It confirms the idea of India's biggest cover-up, exposed by the brilliant analyst Anuj Dhar. The issue of Netaji's disappearance remains strongly politicized due to the rivalry between the Congress and the BJP. It is the duty of unbiased researchers to get to the truth despite any political motivations. At the end of my book, I consider various explanations of Netaji's fate. The Gumnami Baba version, cogently defended by Mr. Dhar and his colleagues, seems to me the most plausible. By the way, if the Faizabad Sadhu was indeed boss, his transformation had a curious parallel in Russian history. There is a version that Tsar Alexander I did not die in 1825, but laid down the scepter and lived out his days in Siberia under the name of a holy man, Fyodor Kuzmich. Though Russian and Japanese graphologists have proved the similarity between the handwritings of the Tsar and the holy man, the line under the mystery has not been drawn yet. Neither has it been so with the case of Gumlami Baba. Of course, further investigation is needed. Yet, as the experience of secret services shows, the system of, of indirect evidence may prove no less important than direct ones. Let us recall the method of Sherlock Holmes. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. To sum up, Netaji was a controversial figure. In him met many contradictions. Between the mass character of the left movement and the elite character of the Bengali nationalism, uh, between the democratism of the liberation movement and his idea of reforming the country with the help of a single disciplined party, between his lifelong uh, going against the current and his search of countercurrents which could be used, uh, between his constant setbacks and considerable achievements. In this manifold duality was refracted the contradictoriness of Bos, uh, not only of Bos's personality, uh, but also of political, social, economic, military and ideological processes in India and the world in the first half of the 20th century. Apnajivan unche uddeshyunko samartit karki, bosne apne yugko achitara pratibimbit kiahe. Me shri anujdharko apko meripustak prastut karnek ka moka denekilie shukar guzarhum. Apke dhyankilie bhut dhanyavad.